Hi, my name is Moshumi Ghosh, and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist in Los Angeles. And I am in private practice where I specialize in sex therapy, uh, mostly working with couples and as well as individuals. Um, most of the time they come in with a sexual issue that might be affecting their relationships or some, some, something of that nature. Um, one of the main reasons I got into this, this field of practice um, specifically is because I noticed that a lot of people were having sexual problems in their relationship as well as the gamut of other problems but the inability to talk about sex was rendering them sort of incapable of solving problems in their relationship when they arised, especially because they weren't talking about specific certain things. Now they weren't talking about sexual stuff, but then it would bleed over into the other aspects of their relationship too. You can't address one without the other. In very much the same way, I think that the mind and body are also connected. And sometimes we might have a psychological problem that we think is all in our head, but then it starts to express itself in another way. And oftentimes sex is the way that some of these issues get expressed first. So that's kind of why I got into it, to sort of help bridge the gap between mind and body, um, and to help bridge the gap between sex and relationships so that people can actually begin to communicate about them within their relationships and get beyond it. Shouldn't The focus shouldn't be sex. We should be able to move past it, but if, unless we can talk about it, we're not gonna be able to get there. Um, there are some common things that I do notice in my practice. Um, one of them is, uh, one really common one is arousal problems. Um, specifically, number one I would say is arousal problem for men. Um, erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation, those are two really common ones. And generally when someone comes in, um, either a couple or an individual come into my office for some sort of arousal disorder, I will assign homework. One of the main focuses of homework in treating a lot of these arousal disorders is encouraging the individual to get out of their head. They're intellectualizing a lot of stuff, they're thinking about things over and over, they tend to ruminate and obsess one idea goes around and around in their head and in order to break that pattern they need to get back into their body and start to feel. So on top of assigning, assigning homework, for example, um, exercising homework, um, sensate focus style of homework which is basically touching, breathing with their partner, relaxation exercises, those are some types of things that I might suggest the partner or the couple do on their own, but in turn I might also accompany them to perhaps a yoga class. Yoga is something that I always recommend for um, a lot of these erectile issues because they're anxiety, a lot of them are anxiety based and yoga is a really good way to sort of treat anxiety, especially when it's, when it's in, a sexual, in a sexual area. Um, Yoga is great to help build focus. Yoga is also really good at um, developing a connection to the body and sort of understanding what's happening in the body. So um, a lot of people in our society that are really that, that tend to work really hard or go from point A to point B, they're always running from meeting to meeting and don't really have an exercise regimen that goes beyond maybe going for a jog or going to the gym and doing cardio, yoga can be a little bit intimidating for a lot of people. So I might accompany them, say, to a yoga class. Another very common um, issue that I treat in my office is arousal disorder in women, which often looks very different than it does in men. Uh, women's arousal issues tend to stem from lack of confidence, low self-esteem, and maybe body image issues, you know, not feeling comfortable about their body, feeling fat, feeling um, disproportionate, you know, all of those things sort of cause women to not feel sexual, sensual, and aroused. So 
And there's a lot of reason women women aren't learning about their bodies is because women's genitalia and anatomy is internal, so it's not something that they look in the mirror and, and see right away. So accompanying them to a sex store might be something that I do. Going to a sex store is very intimidating for a lot of people. People don't want to be seen at a sex store. People don't want to be don't want to ask questions it's embarrassing so going to a sex store with a woman might be something that i do um, so that she can see what kind of resources she has available to her and help her get more in touch with her own sensuality and sexuality exploring herself reading books reading erotic novels um, even maybe watching porn here and there those are all sort of homework assignments that i might give to a woman who is suffering from arousal issue. Um, another common issue that I see a lot are dating problems um, in individuals. They come in, they're not sure what they're doing, why they're not attracting their right mate, why they can't meet women or men. Um, they say they're doing all the right things but everyone they meet, no one seems to like them, they're getting rejected a lot, so then they've got this low self-esteem thing that's kind of being perpetuated a cycle. So something I might do with them is accompany them maybe to a social gathering and observe them while they're mingling with other, other people of the opposite sex um, just to sort of get an idea of what they're doing and, and give them some feedback. Um, um, accompanying them to parties, even them going to yoga class, going to sex shop, going to different venues that allow interaction that has to do with relationships and sexuality. I think those are really good ways to sort of bridge the gap. We can sit in my therapy office for weeks and weeks and weeks and months on end and talk about the same issue over and over and over and no change really happens. The change really happens when we actually physically do something. So getting out there in the world with these clients is, is one of the best ways I think to sort of elicit change.